What's up, guys? I'm back in Vegas. This is my buddy Brian. He wanted to make a cameo, so there he goes. Uh, just walked in the win. I'll play whatever's available. Just looking to get in some games tonight. It's Thursday. I just landed. Ready to play. Let's go. All right, guys. Settle in and get ready for a lot of hands. I'm gonna move through these a little bit quicker than usual because this was a long session and we have a lot of hands to cover. Although not quite as long as another vlog that'll be coming soon, but more on that later. In our first hand, we look down at pocket nines in the big blind. There's a button straddle to $6. For anyone unfamiliar with the button straddle in Vegas, it works as follows. Action starts normal under the gun. If there is not a raise, when action gets to the button, it skips the button, goes to the small blind, big blind, then the button gets absolute last action. If there is a raise before the button, then play proceeds as normal. The button acts after the cutoff, finishing with the small blind and big blind. With that out of the way, we have three limpers when it gets to me, and I raise the $40. Only the button calls, and we're heads up to a flop of 10, 8, 3, two clubs. I see bet $35, the button calls. The turn is a six of hearts. Second pair likely still good here, plus we've improved to a gutter. I continue again, this time for $80. Button folds. Nice to start out with a little momentum in what will be one of the only straightforward hands of this session. In our next hand, we look down at ace queen suited on the button. The hijack opens to $20. The hijack player is a woman that we're gonna be involved with a lot tonight. She was pleasant, but a bit wild at times. I don't recall her name, unfortunately, so let's just call her Linda. We have a great hand and are in position. I raise it up to $80. Linda calls and we're heads up to a flop of king, queen, six, rainbow. Not bad for ace, queen. The hijack checks. I continue for $60. Linda now does something I did not expect and goes all in for about $400. She covers me and to be honest, my gut instinct here is to fold. This is a massive overbet and is exactly the sort of thing I would do with a sneaky two pair or set on a board that favors a pre-flop aggressor when they continue again on the flop. All we have is a bluff catcher here and it seems like a ridiculous size to be bluffing. After thinking it through, I make the discipline fold. Leave a comment down below and tell me if you think that was the right play or if we should have called in this spot. Oh, and while you're here, like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you, but YouTube tells me 84% of you haven't subscribed. Come on guys, it's one click. Thanks in advance. For this one, we look down at Ace King suited in the hijack. Low jack opens to $10. This low jack player's name is Q. He and I are also gonna battle a lot tonight. He asked for this pick after the last hand of the session in which one of us stacks the other. More on that later. But for this hand, I raise up to 35. The button calls and it folds back to Q who also calls. We're three ways to a flop of 976 rainbow. I continue for $40. The button calls, Q calls, and we're off to a turn which brings the jack of clubs. Q checks, now we either have to give up or size up. I like to size up and bet out $120. The button folds, but Q does not, nor does he call. He elects the third option and announces all in. We of course have no choice but to make the fold here. Round one goes to Q, but this is round one of many. In this next hand, we look down at a premium, pocket queen's in middle position. There's a straddle to $6, I open to 30. Only Linda in the straddle calls, and we're heads up to a flop of king, nine, six, rainbow. Linda checks, I continue for $40. Linda thinks for a little bit, but makes the call. The turn is the 10 of hearts. Linda checks. There's a lot of draws out there, so I size up to $100. Linda is not at all pleased, but does eventually find the fold, and we take this one down. Small rebate from our first skirmish, but the battles with Linda are also far from over. In our next hand, we downgrade just a bit to pocket jacks in the small blind. Middle position calls, Q calls on the button, and I raise things up to $50. Under the gun calls, middle position folds, Q is always ready for battle, he calls as well. We're three ways to a flop of four, three deuce, two hearts. I continue for $100. The button tanks for a long time here. So long, in fact, that I'm actually starting to wonder if he's flopped a set and is determining whether to raise or just trap and make the call. But he does eventually fold. Q is out of there as well, and we take this one down. That's a shame, but not gonna complain about taking this one down with pocket jacks, as there is no right way to play them. Or so I've heard. For this one, we look down at King-9 suited in middle position. I open at $15, and the button raises to 60. He's a young, competent guy I haven't played a hand with yet, and I wouldn't mind getting involved. I make the call. We're heads up to a flop of ace, six, three, two diamonds. Not bad for a suited king of diamonds. I check, he checks back. The turn is now the ace of spades. I check again, he bets out $80. We still have the nut flush draw here. If he does so happen to have an ace, I think there's a good chance we can stack him. I make the call. River is a six of spades. We miss our draw, I check again. Our opponent bets out $115. I don't really see a pocket pair above sixes making this play. He would likely just check back and take his equity to showdown. In this spot, our opponent's really polarized to a full house or nothing. If he does so happen to have nothing, we have the best nothing with King High. I make the call and he shows us ace five of hearts. We knew it was one or the other. Unfortunately, this time he had it and our hero call does not work out. 
For our next adventure, we look down at King Deuce of Diamonds on the button. Q opens to $20. I make the call, the small blind calls, and Linda calls. She's now switched seats. We're four ways to a flop of 10, seven, deuce, two diamonds. The small blind player does something I did not expect and open jams for $150. It folds around to me and we just have so much equity on this board. I can't imagine folding, I make the call. And we're off to a run out. The turn comes the king of spades. That feels pretty good until the river brings the 10 of clubs and the small blind shows ace 10 off. This hand started off as a fair fight, a pure flip. We were actually a 90% favorite after binking the king on the turn and then obviously dead on the river. I have no regrets getting it in in a spot like that. We unfortunately just lost the flip this time. After this hand, I reload and we're on to bullet number two. For this one, we look down at another suited hand of diamonds, ace king this time. There's a button straddle, under the gun plus one opens to 21, Q calls, and I raise to $85. Folds back to under the gun plus one who now shoves all in for about 400. Q folds, I make the call, and we're off to a run out. I spot an ace in the window and feel pretty good about it until I get a full picture of the board and see that there are four spades out there. Ugh. Not to worry though, as it's actually the best case scenario when our opponent flips over pocket kings with no spade. Let's go. We table our hand and take it down. Q is beside himself as apparently he would have flopped a flush. Sorry, bud, this one goes to me. A very timely double up here. Let's try to keep this momentum going. What better way to keep the momentum going than to look down to our favorite hand, Jack 10 suited in the cutoff. I open $20. The button and Linda and the big blind make the call. The flop comes very interesting. Queen, Jack, 10, all spades. I continue for $40. The button folds, but Linda, oh, Linda. Linda announces all in for $400. This is the second time she's done this to me today and it's getting old. Any reasonable raise we're calling here, possibly even four betting to deny equity to all the possible combo draws out there, such as King Queen, King Jack, 10 9, Jack 9, Queen 9. Any of those hands containing a single spade would certainly raise in this spot, but this big of a bet, this is always a flush. Always. She asks if I want to see one card for free. I say yes, of course, and she shows us the deuce of spades. That card, of course, seals the deal. There is a 100% chance of a flush at this point, and we make the discipline fold. After folding, Linda actually shows us her other card, which was the nine of spades. Unfortunately for her, she showed us the wrong card. Had I seen the nine of spades, probably still would have folded, but I would have at least thought about it for a while. The nine of spades gives her a ton of possible hands here that we are ahead of, such as nine, 10, jack nine, queen nine, all those hands that I mentioned previously. But when she shows us the deuce of spades, there is a 100% chance we are behind and losing to a flush. Also interesting to note, she called a pre-flop raise with nine deuce of spades. We're gonna save that information for later. In this one, we're still stacking chips from a small hand before when we look down at ace queen off under the gun. I open at $15, we get one, two, three, four, five collars. Awesome. The pop comes ace, seven, five, rainbow. I continue for $60, folds to the cutoff who makes the call. We're now heads up to a turn that comes the jack of clubs. I slow down and check. Cutoff now bets $110. He only has about 100 or so left behind and this sizing doesn't really make a lot of sense to me given that information. I think he's trying to pull a move with a draw. Well, sir, if you'd like to see this river, you are going to have to pay for it. I announce all in. He snap folds looking very annoyed. <laughs> Linda also is not pleased with the situation. What did you have? I need to see it. I'm very happy to sniff out a weak hand, apply some pressure and take this one down. For this one, we once again look down at ace king suited in the small blind. Middle position opens to $12. Cutoff calls, Q calls on the button and I raise to $75. Linda makes the call. Of course she does. Everyone else folds and we're heads up. The flop comes ace, jack, nine, rainbow. I continue for $100. Linda calls once again. The turn is the four of spades. I take a quick peek at Linda's stack. She has about 250 or so left and I announce all in. Once again, Linda looks very annoyed at the situation, reminds me that she did subscribe to the channel and I'm being mean to her. She ultimately lays it down and I do want to thank her for subscribing. I'll show you because you subscribed. Only because you subscribed. Very happy to take down another one at the win. All right, guys, we're going to pause things right here. This was a long session, had so many good hands, and I didn't want to cut any out. So I put up a poll on my Instagram. If you're not following there, make sure you do, at Poker, asking whether you guys wanted to see one long session, like 25, 30 minutes, or have it cut down into two parts. The winner, as you can see, was to cut down into two parts. So this is a good spot to stop and we'll do the second part of the session in the next video. Make sure you come back for that one because Q and I are nowhere near done battling and I promise you the best hands are yet to come. So until then, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe if you haven't already. Good luck out there and I'll see you in the next one.
Make sure to stay for the final two hands as I go head-to-head -head with a viewer in two big hands to end the night.